Let's take a look at some of the new audio functionality found within Cubase Pro 10. We wanted to simplify the process of converting a stereo multi-channel file into dual monos. So let's listen to our guitar part. We notice that the guitar part's gonna have our channel strip, EQ, as well as an effects end. So I'm gonna select the particular track go to my project to convert tracks and we'll choose multi-channel to mono. I could employ this for just selected tracks or all multi-channel tracks. I have options to keep the source tracks, mute them, delete them, or create a new project, as well as different naming conventions. So I'll hit okay. And we can see our different tracks here that have been split. When we go to the channel settings that we see that the you know all the settings have been preserved just as they were in the stereo track. To do the opposite, select the multi-channel mono, go to convert tracks and choose mono to multi-channel. We wanted to make some of the sample editing functionality a little easier as well. So let's go ahead and listen to some drums. So if I double click, we could launch our sample editor. We have a brand new hit point detection algorithm. So this will make quantizing your audio and doing different hit point detection more accurate and more musical than in previous versions. Now, sometimes I may want to do editing where I see the kick and snare, uh, but when I go to do this, I can see one part directly in my sample editor. So if I select two parts and I hit Command or Control E, and activate this icon in the sample editor that allows us to show all selected audio events. I can now see my kick and snare together and I could pick which is the active particular track that we're seeing and doing editing. And I can move tracks, I could do free warping and see the other tracks as a visual reference. You've also expanded the powerful concept of the direct offline processing, which allows you to take different sample editing function or different plugins and to process them offline without taking real-time CPU resources. We could have different banks of favorites. So if you find yourself always using the envelope shaper on your drums, we can now just process that. If I wanted to run my Magneto plugin, on all of the drums. And let's say the bottom snare mic, I just wanted to do a quick phase reverse. So we could have kind of our go-to favorites, but if I wanted to have another bank, I could also load up different effects chain presets or track presets from my projects. So if I wanted to load up an effects chain preset, I could load that up and now all those files have been processed with that. And one mouse click at any time, I could delete an independent process or delete all of the processes to go straight back to where we were initially. So again, the ability to have kind of user definable presets and preferences uh, within the direct offline processing can speed things up. We also had a lot of requests for people running into situations where they wanted to align different tracks rhythmically. Let's listen to some vocals. So must be one. And let's say that rhythmically could be obviously a little tighter. We don't have to zoom in too much to see how it's going to be off. So what we could do is from the audio menu, we could open up the audio alignment panel. We could also activate it directly here. So let's remove some of our previous ones. And we'll say what we want to do is to add a reference track and add other tracks as a target. So I'm going to take this track as a reference. And I could select multiple tracks as a target and click on the plus. And we have options to match words or prefer time shifting, uh, as well as a percentage precision. And I'll just say align audio. And just a matter of seconds. So must be wireless. So must be wireless. They could be just lined up that easily. We saw a lot of people kind of getting lost in doing side chain routing of different sources. So let's say I have a synth bass and a kick. So I wanted to come here. And I wanted to do a side chain compression of the bass using the kick drum. So I'm going to go to my synth and we'll just go to our 
compressor. And what we want to do is to activate the side chain and directly to the right of that, instead of having to go to another track and do the routing, I could add my side chain input here. So now we'll go ahead and just kind of squash that kick. And now the kick is our side chain input for the synth. You've also added a new plugin called Destroyer, and this is often gonna be used for taking your kick and giving that edge that you often need in remixes. So it adds a very colorful distortion. So we say off. For composers, we wanted to make working with video easier as well. And we have a new edit mode for our video. So this could be activated by going to your transport and putting a check next to use video follows edit mode. So now as I move an audio event, we could see the video update frame by frame. If I double click and we go to a MIDI event, I could also move a MIDI note and see that the video updates. So I could align my audio, my edits, my MIDI information, and see that automatically update with the video reference like that. Adding different sound effects from the side here has also been simplified by the ability of just allowing you not to drag and drop the whole sound effect, but to take a region of a sound effect. So I could select just a portion of the sound effect and drag and drop that particular range into our project without having to crop it afterwards. So if I wanted to drag that into my sample editor, drag it onto my timeline, very easy to do. Now, as audio files or samples are being dragged into the project, they may have to do sample rate conversion. And we use a brand new SOX resampling engine to give you better quality results. A lot of our customers have started venturing into the world of virtual reality. So if I wanted to come here, we could see that we could use uh, head tracking. So at this point, we could choose different VR controllers. We could also employ the GoPro VR player remotely. And at this point, we could work with Ambisonics material to do encoding and decoding to Ambisonics so we could listen to our third, and we could go up to third order Ambisonics. And when we go to our VST multi-panner, we can now see all of our head tracking. So if you're working in preparing material to work with like an Oculus headset, we could do all of that VR functionality and authoring directly inside of Cubase. Many people have asked for easier ways of migrating their Cubase projects to other programs. We can now come here and import and export AAF files. One of the subtle changes that happened in previous version was the ability to, when we go to our setup, our project setup, we can now not only record it 16 or 24 bit, but 32 bit integer recording. Uh, plus we have the ability of doing 64 bit floating point. So as we'll see in the near future, different 32 bit integer recording and different 32 bit integer converters come upon the market, Cubase will be able to take advantage of that higher resolution. So as you can see, the new audio capabilities in Cubase make it a great tool for advancing your projects. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.